So I'd like to start off with a small story. The first time I ever saw a computer was in 1985. No, I'm joking. I'm so young, very young. I'm not at all. So the first time I ever saw a computer was when I was in high school. And I think it was one of the most favorable memory I ever had been around computers. And this was a time when we still have Windows XP and Linux installed on machines. And I was pretty amazed when I went into the computer lab and I saw those buttons on the computer blinking and stuff like that. I actually did not understand or know what this button meant, but it was really exciting to look at computers and see my, my, uh, my, my colleagues like interact with the computers. And that was my first introduction into programming. All right, so a little introduction about myself. I'm a tech lead currently working at Ignite Studio. And on my free time, I also run the Central African Golan community, which is a community made up of like-minded individuals around the Go programming language that want to communicate, share ideas, and meet together. And without further ado, let's get into the talk. This is my early days. <laughs> As I've already mentioned in this presentation, I uh, the first time I actually saw a, an actual PC was when I was in high school. And I was really drawn and fascinated with this idea of you could use something that has a small ball under and control something on the screen that has a cursor on it. And at the time, I didn't actually realize or know that, oh, this is a mouse, this is a screen, and that's a cursor, and that's how you interact with it. And at the time, I didn't actually know what this was. And I was really drawn to that and fascinated by all the lights they had on the PC and stuff like that. It was kind of Star Wars for me. And fast forward, I was one of three arts major in a class full of all science major students doing computer science in high school. And that meant that there was a lot of living up to that I need to do. And on top of that, we started learning how to code in HTML and in Pascal. And I remember this one time when we were in the computer lab, we had, my, our lecturer had this question and he asked, and I was, fortunate enough, unfortunate enough to be picked to answer this question. And he asked me, oh, what is the difference between a volatile and a non-volatile memory? And I gave a beautiful definition for that. But the problem with that was, or the mistake that I did was, I took the definition for a volatile and gave it to a non-volatile and took the definition for a non-volatile and gave it to the volatile. And it was really grueling because everyone like laughed and the professor shook his head. And it was really discouraging for me, like for a single mistake that I did. And when the class ended, I felt, oh, maybe I shouldn't take this class. Maybe I shouldn't just go back to this class and stuff like that. And on top of that too, in school, we had this thing in school where students were not allowed to go into the computer lab without any supervision for their professor. Meaning that the only opportunity you get to maybe do some practical work or to learn, we learn, or maybe practice on what your professor taught you a couple of hours ago or yesterday in class by yourself in a computer lab was really limited. So there was limited access without any supervision. And as growing up without having a computer or a personal PC back at home, it was really difficult to keep up with the pace of learning in class and the catching up to do that you had to do. And I also also remember in college, we had this misconception, right, in our class that, oh, you cannot, because when I got to college, we started writing, I started coding in C. And there was this misconception that, oh, you cannot use C as an actual language to get into or start off your career with, right? Like it was really rife in the class. Everyone was saying it, everyone was saying it, that, oh, you can use C to uh, start up a career with this, C is hard, C is really low level, C is meant for many people, embedded engineers, don't learn it, okay. And under all that, I had to write most of my C code on a piece of paper, still I didn't have a personal laptop at the time. So I had to write it on a piece of paper. And any time that I would just write it and close my eye and pray that it works, right? <laughs> so it was really like, I did that, that, that steep learning curve to catch up with, with all the, the new concept, the new philosophy, the new patterns that I've been taught in class and to catch up with all of that. So you really increase like the odds for me into getting uh, familiar 
And because of that, I became really, I didn't like C. Like, that was the honest truth. I didn't like to code in C. And transitioning from that, having that mentality, that mindset of, oh, I hate C, is for embedded engineers. Run away from it, don't learn it. And transitioning now to go, how that look like? And one of my major challenge that I always faced when I was writing coding C was to deal with pointers. And it took really me a while to wrap my head around pointers, working with Go, but I never actually understood it when I was working with it in C. And I never understood there was something as simple as, oh, you have a variable, you have an address for it. The address points to the value and that's it. It was really thought about it like black magic in my head when dealing with pointers in C. But that all became different when I was introduced to pointers in Golang now. Okay, why go? Why did I choose to code in a language that the semantics look a little bit like C that I didn't really actually like C in college? Why did I choose this programming language or how was it different for me? I think one of the main drivers why I felt comfortable in using Golang was his design philosophy. Golang was designed around the idea of simplicity. And I think that was a really driving factor for me that I felt comfortable with it. From the ground up when the engineers and the, the developers in the community thought of creating a new programming language, what? that, okay, let's also make a programming language that will be fast enough to build, to reduce our build times and let it be simple enough that people transitioning from other languages might feel comfortable with it. And I do understand that Go has its own different way of doing things that maybe people most especially coming in from the OP world or the object-oriented world might seem, might seem a little bit weird the way Go does it. But the main driver for me that I chose Go was its simplicity. And the second driver why I chose Go was its story behind it. This might seem really funny, but it was actually the story of its creation that really drew my attention because all my years of learning other new programming language, I haven't actually taken the time to look into why a programming language was created and the reason behind creation or what it was trying to solve. I'll try to tell this story to the best of my understanding and feel free to fact check me too. So the story goes as we had these engineers in Google at the time. And so it was uh, Rob Pike, Griezmann and Thompson. And they were having this problem when, because at the time their, their programs took a lot of time to build. And which was a problem for them, for them, because imagine write a program in C plus and it takes, I don't know, upwards of some couple of minutes to compile and stuff like that. So it was an issue for them at the time. And they decided to solve this problem by building a new programming language that will be centered around simplicity, easy to understand and the third one, which is really important, fast. They come up with this idea of Go, which as I've been reading online, some people say, oh, it was meant as a replacement of C, but I do not think it was actually a replacement of C. Other people say, oh, it is a superset of C because the semantics look a little bit like C and it draws most of its design philosophy from C, but it is totally different in its own right. So that is totally different. And I really, I was really, I really liked this story and I was drawn to the idea of behind its creation. And when it was launched in, I think, 2011, was it 2009? It had those two years, but I really enjoyed this story behind its creation and how these guys thought about a problem that they had and a programming language that could solve that problem. And Rob Pai gave a talk back in 2015 about what we did right and what we did wrong. And I think he really touched on some really important points too, on why the, of the things they did right beginning of starting off with Go and the things they did wrong. And I think those are some of the things that draw me to go or why I choose Go. And the third thing that I also like to pile on is Go also comes in like a 
full-fledged package, which I find really easy for me as a kind of a, a novice when I was starting off with Go. So it comes with the formatters, it comes to all the testing libraries, it comes even with an HTTP tools library that you can use to spin up your local server. So there's no need to install any additional packages to use. There's no need to configure anything. You just install Go and from there you have your link that's already a big thing. You have your test packages already baked in. You have your, your HTTP package already baked in so they can spin up your local server for web development. I think all these things coming together really made it appealing for me to choose Go. So my idea of programming at the time that you couldn't use C to start off a career and discovering Go that looked similar to what I hated in college to learn really changed my perspective about these things and offered me an opportunity to dive into this language and really see how it works and becoming, most especially becoming really comfortable with it. Moving forward, so what actually happened with, or how did Go actually change my life? I would rather like to say more, more rather like to say it actually changed my perspective. How do you, as someone that all your life through college, you have always understood that there are certain, there are only few and certain language that you can use to start off a career with. And your first job that you ever had gave you an opportunity or you were being required to code in a language that looked like a language, i.e. that is C, that you hated in college. So how do you, I guess, work around that, become comfortable with that? I guess you could, I could look at the go as either help me to hear from my past wounds, misconceptions that I had about C, because I always had this idea that C is really difficult and no one can actually learn and understand it. And the people that actually understand it, I don't know, if genies, it really helped me to hear from that misconception that I had. And my first project that I actually worked on was using Golang as a software, as a junior developer, which was to build an online ticketing system. And I had only a week to familiarize myself with code before standing up the project next week too. So it even, even, you know, even though the learning curve was really steep, but I think coming from the angle or coming from the viewpoint of understanding, oh, okay, what is programming language trying to understand? How does it look like? What are the features, the things that it brings to the table and why are we using it to, does it actually solve our business case or the problem that we are having that we want to solve in this particular business case? So it really shaped my perspective. And also I worked with it for over here and within that, I also got an opportunity to become a tech lead working with it, which I think maybe it wouldn't have happened if I was using other programming language to code or maybe I'm just lucky, I don't know. But I think it really changed me in that way. So my perspective and in my career and also offered an opportunity to meet some really amazing people out there in the Go community. Uh, shout out to my boy from the, to the, uh, from the Go Insiders community and also the uh, Go Slack community to really amazing people that offered guidance and uh, people that are willing to take out your free time to answer your question and send you messages to reply to some message or questions that you might have, which I think was pretty cool and amazing too. What does future look like for me working with Go? I think it will be more of having these kinds of presentation and sensitizing more developers in my local community because I did a, a little observation and in my local community, there are not a lot of code developers or people that are even familiar with it. 
So I think for me, the future with, with working with Go will be more of sensitizing and having this kind of presentations, workshop, meetings, meetups. And that is the primary reason why I decided to start running the Central Coffers community to put the word out there, another way of saying it, and to help others too. And if people that had the same experience like me and trying to well, probably so go online and see what kind of programming language this is and maybe came from the same background as me, I think doing more of the scans of presentation might more hold their hand and pull them up. I think that's that's how it looks like when when I envision the future working with Go. One of the key takeaways from this talk that I think might be useful for early starters, for people that are undecided here, for people that are just stuck in the career limbo, stuff like that. And I think perseverance and resourcefulness, although it sounds a little bit cliche, but I think the idea of consistency in just starting off with a programming language and building a lot and lots of projects too, and having people around you to pull you up. And I would recommend the Go Lang Insider Community on X and the official Go Slack community too, which I think are really valuable resources to help people that are looking to start off or even people that have been in the industry or in the Go ecosystem for a while too. So I hope this, this talk offers some value to you and thank you very much too for listening and enjoy the rest of the conference.